Uh, Barry Nussbaum is with the American Truth Project. He has a, a high profile when it comes to world affairs and, and um, talking about things like these and, and a connection with Israel. It, Barry, I'd like to brag on you a little bit. First, let's talk about your connection with Israel, if we could. Well, I, uh, as you've mentioned, my connections there run deep for, my goodness, 25 years um, in both military intelligence, uh, political sources, uh, with the uh, anti-terrorism educational school, which actually is attended now by our daughter. So I, I have a constant um, interaction with Israel on a daily basis. and. Uh, as I often say, Israel is the canary in the coal mine because they're on the front lines in defense of freedom in an area where there isn't any freedom outside of the state of Israel. And unfortunately for Israel, uh, when Iran tweets or does a press release, uh, death to America and death to Israel basically start out and end every communication. And um, <laughs> Iran has been very, very, very clear that they intend to uh, unleash their terrifying secret weapons against Israel and destroy the country within 20 seconds. Uh, that's directly from both the president, uh, Rouhani, in Iran, and the supreme dictator, uh, Khomeini. They're both saying the same thing. And uh, at the later part of that sentence, and oh, by the way, we're going to destroy the United States as well. Yeah, so, yeah. look, you never know what someone is capable of doing until they do it. But uh, as many great philosophical political leaders over the years have said, if someone says they're coming to kill you, <laughs> believe them. And that goes all the way back to the Bible. In sure, the Bible sure. it said, if your enemy is coming to kill you, rise up and slay them first. You don't wait to lose half your family. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's the big question that's facing us right now. You know, before the break we were talking about sanctions, and quite frankly, uh, the worst of those sanctions have yet to come. I think it's going to have to do with the Bank of International Settlements, which is going to cut off Iran's international currency exchanges, which means they can't trade with anybody in the world. And then they're going to have a tough choice because the very wealthy and powerful are the IRGC, uh, the Army uh, Special Guard Corps in Iran. They control all the wealth, they control the businesses, and they surround and protect the leaders. Uh, the people in the streets are hungry, they're mad, they don't want war, they want to be associated with the West. They've had it with radical Islam, at least the Shia uh, insane version that's being propagated by the supreme leader. They want to be part of the rest of the world. Netanyahu talks about it all the time, that Israel's beef is not with the people of Iran, it's with the leadership of Iran. So will there be a revolution? Some scholars in Israel say that will happen, meaning they'll overthrow their leadership, which would be great. Some people say the United States, the CIA, and our proxies should be able to help that resolution uh, and um, bring it into the uh, 21st century of civilization. And the third alternative, obviously, is there is some sort of armed conflict, and we literally, and I mean this literally, bomb the Iranian Navy out of existence or destroy their air force. It could happen in a matter of hours and there would be nothing left for them to export terror uh, other than the billions and billions that are left over from Obama's legacy that they've exported all over the world. There's no secret, and they brag about it, that they spent that money that Obama gave them on terror. They didn't spend it on their people. They didn't spend it on infrastructure. They didn't take care of the people at home. They're exporting terror on a regular basis and enhancing uranium. And, and yes, as you say, Iran hate, they hate people of the book, Israel, United States of America. Um, and this posturing, the, the threats they've made because the sanctions are really, you know, they're hurting them, obviously. How much of the posturing do you think is, is real? Um, how, how, I mean, how much, how, how, how well off do you think they are when it comes to this uranium enrichment? Well, I, I had a very interesting conversation some years ago um, with uh, someone I can't name, but uh, he was a, uh, well, he was very high up in the CIA. And what he said to me was that the reason CIA is so worried about Iran is they have a unique view of Islam. They are 
apocryphal in their belief system, meaning if they start a war and they die in that war, they go directly into paradise and they don't go into the sort of holding pattern on the way to heaven. And they believe that they will um, bring about the Messiah returning, which is um, sort of the descendant of Muhammad to come back and create the caliphate uh, over the world. Right, no, uh, make no doubt about this. This, this. this fight, this tension goes back to Old Testament times. Oh, they believe if they can bring about Armageddon, this is literally what they believe, Amy, this is what was explained to me, that they will be part of the ruler, uh, I guess you'd call it the empire of the world under the Quran um, and the word of Muhammad and the caliphate flags will fly around the world. So they're not afraid of death, they're not afraid of dying, they want to be martyrs, uh, it's automatic virgins and automatic entry into paradise. And that's what worries uh, our intelligence, because if you are anxious to die, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of the suicide bombers coming out of Japan in World sure, War II. Sure. They took off knowing they weren't coming back. It's a commitment and, like no other. Exactly. And how do you stop that? The only way, and the American um, battleships and aircraft carriers knew this, Amy, in World War II, they had to shoot down and kill the pilots. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no other way to stop them. They were, they were uh, the divine wind, right? They were the kamikaze, and their purpose was to die mm -hmm. for the emperor. Well, there are people in Iran that believe that, and they have millions of followers, and if they have the ability and the mechanism to inflict that kind of pain on the West, what I was told was, we expect it will happen. So at some point, either there's a government change from external or internal factors or a combination of the two, or they just wake up and say, enough's enough, we've had it. I don't feel comfortable that that's going to happen. Look, these sanctions have been in place for a long time, and Trump has ratcheted them up to the moon. And what did they do? They attacked a British tanker, and we're going to seize it with gunboats. I mean, that is so brazen, so outrageous. Like I said, if it happened to any other country, uh, right now there'd be bombs falling in the capital.